thoughts about this area of self-leadership. Got it, thank you. <laughs> so some of your thoughts. So we're gonna use Mentimeter for this. Uh, Mentimeter is a really good way for you to uh, respond uh, anonymously. Okay, so if, you, uh, if you've got a cell phone handy, grab, take a photo of that QR code. Uh, if you're gonna use your laptop, you can go to menti.com and put in this code number, this eight digit number, 7918 Okay, and the, uh, the question I'd like you to, to answer is, if only I were in charge, I would change dot, dot, dot. Okay, so this could be a work situation. It could be a family situation. It could be social situation. Uh, where Any situation you can think of where currently maybe you're not the person in charge. So for me, this is a home situation. I, I'm not in charge. Right. So if you think about your own situation, something where you're not in charge, but if you were, what would you change? Okay, so jump on there. Um, actually, I'll grab this link as well and put it in the chat so it's easier for. Uh, oh yeah, Derek's done that. Thank you, Derek. Okay, go ahead. You can use Derek's link. I think this link works as well. Uh, we're all about choice. Four day work week, wonderful. If only you were in charge, I would change to have a four day work week. Yeah, great. Uh, anyone else? Who else? What would you change if only you were in charge? Could be a work situation, could be home. Positive work culture, great. Okay. Wow, that's that's so good. If you're in charge, you would uh, implement a positive work culture. That is so. That's what we are trying to do here at, at uh, Blanchard globally, Blanchard Singapore. Uh, we want to impact, we want to improve the work culture around Singapore, around Asia Pacific. Uh, and the way we see we're going to do that is through through leadership development. Culture, you're going to change culture. Okay, similar to positive work culture. Change financial situation, absolutely. Yeah, um, man, the, the global situation is so is so confusing right now, right? Uh, we've got coming out of COVID, uh, and then we've got this Russia-Ukraine thing. Uh, we've got inflation that, that's coming in, it was in the newspapers. How the office interacts, not online, but more physical interaction, okay? Um, and yet we're here on this online webinar. Uh, I'd love to come and do an in-person session uh, for workplaces. I, you know, while on one hand we go, okay, it's all virtual and we've got to, we've got to adapt to change. I, I, I feel you that this physical interaction is something that I enjoy too. Work climate, yeah. Employee engagement activities, absolutely. Uh, so that, that really feeds into the positive work culture as well, work climate. Uh, happy hour sponsored by company. Woohoo! Hey. That's not too difficult uh, to achieve, actually. Okay, great. Maybe we'll, leave, we'll give you, you know, another 10 seconds or so if uh, you're putting in anything, any other suggestions, um, what would you change? Okay, just go ahead and put in your last couple of words and hit enter so we don't miss it up. Okay. Let's go. And three, better reward for overachievers. Great. Yeah, um, you want everybody wants to be rewarded for, for their hard work. Absolutely. And three, two, one, and I'll close this. Thank you very much for uh, contributing your thoughts. Um, so in this in this session on self-leadership, the full workshop is actually three sessions of two hours. So what I'm trying to get, give you here is the brand's essence of chicken. Uh, version of it. Okay, so all these two hours, six hours of workshop actually plus pre work plus some post work all squished into one hour. Um, so I'm going to try and do that. Uh, to be honest, usually I don't go over time. Today I'm a bit worried. Okay, so if uh, I also would like to go home at five o'clock, uh, I know it's a super long weekend. So I'm going to try to, to go through this uh, with your help. Okay, so self leadership is having the mindset and skill set to get what you need to succeed. 
and it's based on the SL2 model. The SL2 model is like the uh, sort of cornerstone of a large number of blend trap programs. Okay, so this is what it looks like. If you Google SL2 model, there's a lot of articles about it. There's YouTube videos about it. Um, so there's a quite a, a bit you can you can you can find out about it on Google. But the difference is in a work when you're in a workshop or with somebody's presenting like this, you are able to engage with the material. There's practice, uh, forum to ask questions, to clarify things. Because when you start digging down, there's a lot of words here which we think we know what it means. But when we start digging down the questions that come up, how do we actually implement this? Um, and all those gets answered in, in a full-on workshop. So that's, you know, in terms of intellectual property, you can Google, you can get it, no problem. But in terms of behavioral change, in, in terms of uh, actual application, that's where uh, the, the value of the workshop comes in. And so with the Blanchard programs, um, this model, is I was saying it's it's the bench it's the cornerstone and then it, it gets applied to lots of different uh, situations. So for self leadership, which is what we're going to do today, we're using this model. One on one leadership is what SL two covers. That's the program that is probably the most run leadership program in the world. Um, for team, there's team leadership using and then organizational leadership. There's a change leadership. It's it's leading people through change. And all of it is filtered through this lens of the SL2 model. So that when as an organization, if say you do SL2 as a, the, the one on one leadership framework, and we use this same framework across the organization, then you get this overarching, this coherent, this uh, leadership culture where everything fits together. Uh, rather than doing one, you know, get one program from here, one program from there, then there's some uh, contradictions there. So uh, we, you know, and that's not helpful to the culture. Um, so this is where what we're going to zero in on today: the self leadership side of things. And as we go through, um, you know, the following months, we will touch on various parts of the of the Blanchard uh, sort of suite of programs. Okay. So the question is: How, as from a self leadership perspective, how can I get beyond what is holding me back? What are some of the things, what are the main things which are holding people back from being uh, all they can be? You know that, that song, Be All You Can Be, right? In the army, but you know, this is in your organization, in your family, in your social situation. So self-leadership looks at this from two lenses. Firstly, mindset and skill set. Okay, skill set is great. Goal setting, diagnosing, matching. So we will be covering all these in in, uh, in a brief sort of detail, not, not a huge amount of detail, but just an overview level. So what really makes the change is that mindset area. Um, so we want to challenge some of the constraints that we are assuming that we have. Um, being proactive, activating points of power. So do, because of the time during this one hour session, we won't go through the activate points of power, but we are going to look at challenging assumed constraints straight after this. Then we'll go through the skill sets, and then right at the end, we'll come back to being proactive. Uh, and we'll, I'll get, I'm going to give you a really handy tool that you can use. In fact, if some of you here are team leaders, feel free to email that to your team members and get them to use it as well. Um, it's a very useful little tool. OK, so let's start with this. It's a in short intro video on assume constraints. Uh, and a lot of us have heard of this analogy of the, you know, the elephant that's small, you tied to a stake, grows bigger, it doesn't run away. Um, so the video starts with that, but very short, and then it goes into a bit of application for ourselves. Okay, so if um, I'm going to start the video, and if there is no volume, hang on, just let me check that I've got volume switched on. Yes, I do. Uh, if there's any problem with the audio, Derek, please uh, message me and let me know. This baby elephant is being trained to stay put. He's tethered to a stake by a heavy chain. Although the baby elephant pulls and tugs, he can't break away. Eventually, he stops trying. Even when he grows into a five-ton adult and could easily pull the entire stake out of the ground, he doesn't. Because he believes he cannot, he doesn't even try. That is his assumed constraint. An assumed constraint is a belief that limits new experiences. 
As adults, we all have assumed constraints. What beliefs do you have that are holding you back? Your assumed constraints not only prevent you from producing your best work, but they can also defeat you before you even try. Your assumptions hold you back from setting goals or believing you can achieve them. On the other hand, challenging your assumed constraints is liberating. Letting go of outdated and debilitating assumptions gives you a sense of autonomy that generates vitality and well-being. Challenge your assumed constraints and free yourself from the tethers of limiting beliefs that have kept you from realizing your possibilities. Okay, nice quick little video. Um, what are some examples of potential assumed constraints? Okay, to give us a bit of uh, an idea. So if we take the situation of a training, I mean, we are in a, you know, a, a, a sort of webinar um, talking about training, and so some assumed constraints people may have about joining training is, could be, I'm going to get behind on my work. For example, man, training is a waste of time. Every time go workshop, come back, still the same. I hope I haven't lost my Singaporean uh, accent. It's there somewhere after 20 years. <laughs> I'm shy. I'd rather learn on my own. Read a book or something. I don't like to be put on a spot to answer questions in class. Right? The trainer always picks somebody who... He thinks it's not, not paying attention. Um, so don't worry, I'm not going to do that in this, in this workshop. I'm not going to put you know, anybody on the spot. I have to keep in touch with my office at all times because I'm so important. Um, so these are some potential assumed constraints in, in the situation of a training workshop. Okay, so if you look at just now, we, we came up with a whole bunch of uh, situations where we would like to see change. Okay, if only I was in charge, I would like this you know, in our Mentimeter. Um, so in all these situations, actually there are constraints behind why we are not making those changes now. Because I said, you know, the, the question was, if you were in charge, this is what you change. But you're not in charge, so you cannot change. What are the constraints that are holding you back from making those changes? Okay, are the constraints real or are they assumed? Okay, some of the constraints are real. I'm not gonna, gonna you know, uh, make it sound like, oh, there's no constraints at all. It's all up to you. You can do whatever you want. The world is your oyster, right? That's not really what we're saying. But there are some things there which are assumed and may not be true. Okay, so assumed constraints are beliefs that hold you back. Some beliefs actually channel you and push you forward further uh, towards a goal. But there are some beliefs that hold you back. Um, and so what we're going to do is to challenge these assumed constraints. Um, and break through them. So here's the first tool that we are giving you. So once I finish this slide, you can take a screenshot. And this is something you can apply immediately after this. Okay. So we'll just grab an assume constraint. If I go to training, I'm going to get behind on my work. This is an example. Um, so what we want to do with this assume constraint is flip it. So instead of saying, sure, you know, we go, I don't want to do training because uh, if I go to training, I'm going to get behind on my work. So if you flip it and say, actually, learning and self-development is like sharpening an X. It's an investment into improving my effectiveness. Okay, so we take what was a negative statement and we turn it into a positive. And then take action. How are we going to go you know, do this? How are we going to carry this up? Uh, and so the action is, I will get the most out of this one-hour investment. So if you see talk, talking about this webinar, I will get the most out of this one-hour investment by fully engaging and applying any new insights I gain. Okay, so just want to want to grab you now, and, and I'm using this as an example, but also as an attention grab, that, that I'm going to give you a whole bunch of little tools here uh, that you can immediately go home and use, uh, even in your family dinner tonight, possibly. Um, so if you hear maybe your children talking about, I uh, cannot lie, if only I had more this, I had more that, uh, if I was you know, smarter, my results were better. There are lots of assumed constraints behind those I cannot statements. Um, and so what do we do? We flip it. And then what action are we going to take to see us overcome this, this assumed constraint? Okay, so in the full workshop, we actually dig around to this. We give people time to work this through, uh, you know, test some of the assumed constraints. But this is just, you know, as a webinar, this is the tool. You can take and use it. 
And of course, like I was saying before, some constraints are real. So those don't apply. So test the constraints, you know? Man, I cannot, uh, there's some constraints that you listed before, right? In, uh, um, where is it? Yeah, in, in the, in the, yeah, yeah. Um, my financial situation, you know, it's not, it's, it's not where I want it to be. So what, what is the constraint behind that? Okay, can we flip it? Are there things that we can do around that? Um, happy hour sponsored by the company, you know, are there things, can you say any influence you can have uh, towards that? Um, positive work culture, how can you influence that? Right, so, so these are, that's just a really simple tool that we can use around challenging our assumed constraints. Um, and so in our workplace, in our families, in our social situations, what are the constraints that, what are things that we think are holding us back? And actually, uh, there is something we can do about it. Even if we start off small, quite often we start off small and then we let it grow. Because influence, people think you need to have position to have influence. Actually, it's the other way around. I see this happen so much. Uh, Derek said, I've been involved with leadership for over 20 years. Uh, I am 42. Yes. Which means I've been doing this since I was 22. And who is going to listen to a 22-year-old teach them about leadership? Right? Um, but it's worked for the last 20 years. Uh, because if you see on my assumed constraints, I'm too young, nobody's going to listen to me. Can we flip it? What actions can we take uh, to, to, to break out of that, that, uh, that barrier we set for ourselves? Okay, so that was the first mindset that we, we addressed, challenging your assumed constraint. We're going to go through the skill sets and then we're going to come back to being proactive. And, and the, the proactive mindset area, there's another really useful uh, tool that, that I'm going to give to you guys in the chat later. Um, so going into skill set, there are three skill sets that we look at as self-leaders. Um, for example, so if you've done SL2, like Benjamin here, um, you'll see that the skill sets are actually similar to the SL2 skill sets. But what we're doing is a self-leader will approach his skill sets from the position of seeking leadership. The leader will approach his skill sets, the team leader, the manager, whatever, will approach these skill sets from the perspective of providing leadership to your team. But actually, the model is the same. The central model is the same. And so if you've got in your teams, you've got your team members applying, having the same framework of leadership, understanding of leadership as the team leaders, then there's this commonality, this common language that they can use to communicate. Okay, and what we're going to see is alignment between the team members, individual contributors, and the team leaders. So how do we get this? I'm going to run through this very quickly. We've all heard about SMART goals. Um, but if you look at this set of SMART goals closely, you'll find that there are two words which are different from the normal SMART goals. In my opinion, it has improved on the normal SMART goals. Okay, so the two words which are different are the M and the T, motivating and trackable. Okay, specific is the normal SMART goals. Um, in normal SMART goals, M stands for measurable. But what we're doing is, if it's specific, it's measurable. Right, so we're taking the measurable and we're putting it into the specific. So specific, something specific has to be measurable and uh, time bound. So time bound is not normally the T. Instead of that, we change the T to trackable. Okay, so how are we going to track the progress of this? So a smart goal, specific. What does it look like? When does it need to be done? Motivating. Am I going to be excited, interested in this goal? Attainable. That's the same as. No smart goals, relevant. Is this not related to what my organization is doing? Uh, or is my boss asking me to, you know, give him reminders about his satay and badminton sessions with his, you know, with his friends and, and hang out? Is that relevant to the organization? I don't know. I mean, if you're a PA, maybe. Uh, if you're an engineer, then probably not. Okay, so trackable is how are we going to track this? Um, so really just a slightly different way of looking at SMART goals. Um, and I think this is much better because the original SMART goals doesn't talk about motivating, which to me is a really important uh, factor. Um, if you want to look at a positive work 
culture, work environment, you want people to be motivated to be there. And if you don't address that at the goals area, when are you going to address it? I know at the commission, uh, when it's time to calculate commissions, right? Um, so we motivate people externally. You do all this work, I pay you commission, I give you a bonus. Uh, but it's much better if people are internally motivated for the goals and tasks that they're doing. Okay, so we're not saying people have to be motivated by every task. In, you know, there's always going to be things that you have to do, which maybe you don't always enjoy. Just have to do that. But if you go through a month, a week or a month, and nothing you do is motivating, then that's an issue. Then we need to have that conversation with your manager. Okay, so smart goals, specific and trackable. Usually these are the two that get written down, and then you have a conversation around the others. So assigning SMART goals. When do people get assigned goals? Uh, first one that usually pops to mind is start of the year, right? Or end of the year, setting your KPIs for next year. So that's one level of, of assigning goals, assignation of goals. Um, when else do goals happen? Maybe on a project level, right? So we can understand annual goals. We can understand project level goals. How about when you meet your boss, your team leader at the water cooler. Okay, so if you are face to face or your team leader sends you a Slack, hey, can you do this? Or you're just having a normal conversation and your team leader goes, hey, can you be more of a team player now? Right? So all these instructions, actually, you can think of them as goals. So not, I'm not saying that the team leader has to write down every goal and you know, is it smart or not smart thing box but as self leaders if you want to lead ourselves this is a really good lens through which we can look at the instructions we are being given was that specific do i know actually what my boss wanted me to do uh is there a time limit for this was there a time set for this uh trackable okay how am i going to report and whether or not i'm doing this Right? Is it just you know, send him a message once a week saying, hey, this is being done, or once a day? R, is this relevant to the organization? A, is this attainable? And so STREM at SMART, right? With the, in the blend chart sort of world, we rearrange it to S-T-R-E-M, STREM, um, which is specific. Is it specific? Is it trackable? Is it relevant? Is it attainable? Finally, do I find it motivating? And very often when a leader gives you instructions, so sometimes, especially the smaller instructions, uh, they are not thinking about, was that specific enough? Was that attainable? Was that relevant? Was that... They just felt something and they gave it to you, right? So as a self-leader, if we get a goal that is not smart, what can we do? So this is, it's written down. So don't, I mean, the, 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 the what's this? form on the right is a little bit more, uh, formal. But if you look at the questions on the left, okay, so if your task is not specific, not trackable, what do we need to do? We need to clarify it. If the task is not relevant or attainable, we need to negotiate it. If the task is not optimally motivating to you, then maybe let's reframe it. Okay, so like I was saying before, not every task has to be optimally motivating. Uh, but if man, you've been given 20 tasks and none of them are motivating, then that's where you can have another conversation around reframing this task. Um, there's an example given uh, <clears throat> of uh, a manager. So I was doing this, this uh, similar workshop for a private bank. So uh, the, there's an example of, um, hey, go and book up a corporate box during the Singapore Grand Prix. Uh, to bring up our clients to. So if somebody is interested in F1, great, that's so motivating for them, right? If somebody is not, not interested in Formula One, what, how do we make that motivating for them? Or how can they, as a self-leader, make it motivating? Maybe they're interested in wine, right? How about we do a corporate box at the F1 and then we have a wine tasting session? Oh yeah, cool, right? Uh, how about we do this? And then we invite some of my key clients as well. Yeah, great. Okay, so there are different ways where you can reframe a goal um, so that to make it more motivating for you. 
and that helps yourself. So at one level, we can say, hey, yeah, my leader should be the one making my goals smart, etc. So that is an SL2. When we do sell, uh, you know, at the SL2 workshop, we are talking, we're training the leaders on that to think about smart goals for their people. But from the perspective of a self-leader, when you are the one being given these goals, if they are not smart, this is how we can seek the leadership that we need to clarify and align on the goals. Okay, clarify, negotiate, or reframe if the goal is not smart or we need it to be smarter than it is. Great, so that was the first skill set in, in the full-on workshop. We spent a bit more time on this year and there's a bit of practice, there's a bit of, you know, how do we actually go about framing these questions? Uh, but in a, in a webinar, it's going to be a little bit, uh, you know, it's, it's that, that, that overview sort of level. Next skill we're going to look at is diagnosing. So given that you have your goal, clear, smart, specific, trackable, relevant, attainable, motivating, everything, okay? What leadership do you then need on the working on and fulfillment of that goal? What leadership do you need? Just whatever my leader likes, lah, right? My leaders, whatever is the leadership style, there are some training uh, methodologies or philosophies around where it's around the leader's leadership style, right? So Blanchard turns that around actually and goes, actually a good leader is one who is flexible depending on the needs of their people. So as a self-leader, you are the team member. What do you need when you're working on a task? So this is diagnosing your needs. So Blanchard has, uh, we, we talk about developmental level and the development level has two components, competence and commitment. Okay, competence is can do or not. Commitment is want to do or not. <laughs> Basically, right, let's Singaporeanize it. Um, and when we look at competence, there's two parts to it. There is goal or task specific skills and there's transferable knowledge or skills. So transferable is like, you know, somebody's a manager, maybe people skills. Uh, maybe if somebody is an accountant, then they've been to university, they know what a balance sheet looks like, they know what a, a profit and loss looks like, they know how to do cash flow, all that kind of stuff. So that's transferable skills. But do they know how to do profit and loss in your organization? Hmm. What are your specific processes? Hmm. Don't know. Okay. So that's where, uh, we, how we look at competence. Two areas, transferable skills, knowledge and skills, and goal-specific knowledge and skills. And they both have to be demonstrated. Just because you say you know, doesn't actually mean you know. Have you done it before? How many of us have been in a position where we think we know something, should be okay now. I think I've got, actually, I've been in a position a lot. Um, and then when we actually go to do it, we realize, what oh, actually it's not that easy, right? So um, that's where competence needs to be demonstrated rather than imagined. Next one, commitment is made up of motivation and confidence. Okay, so competence can do or not. Commitment is what to do or not. Okay, so uh, motivation, do you want to do? Confidence, do you think you can do it, right? So those two are subtly different. Do I think I can do it? And do I actually want to do it? Okay, so those two make up commitment. And we put these together to give us this diagram. Uh, D1, so this diagram charts the typical growth, typical development uh, process of somebody working on a task, normally a new task. Okay, so D1, level one, is generally somebody who's low competence, High commitment. Okay, so think about when you just learned a skill. Maybe some of you, you know, learn guitar, how to play guitar, or drive a car. Um, I when I came back to Singapore, I started uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Very fun, right? High commitment, low competence. When I first started, don't know anything. Uh, sometimes we call it enthusiastic beginner. Uh, you can think about a, a fresh grad. You know, got the first job coming into your your, your office. So D1, oh, everything can. Yeah, 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 good. No, sure. Motivated, confident, uh, but don't know what they don't know. And then very often, once you start doing the task, you go to D2 because they have, now they've started doing it. They gain a little bit of competence, but now the commitment takes a hit because either their confidence, 
Because why? Wow, it's not as easy as I thought. Wow, oh, really so difficult. You know, or the motivation. Man, is this like this is not what I signed up for? I didn't realize that this, this task is going to involve so much sales task, you know, sales job. I thought, wow, so uh, glamorous, you know, take wine and dine clients and all that. Actually, there's so much cold calling, just pick up the phone and call people. Uh, commitment takes a hit. This D2 phase is quite often where people leave the organization. Uh, because maybe they decide that's not for me. That's not what I signed up for. Man, it's too difficult. Let's go do something else. If they stay and they survive the D2 period, sort of coming out from the bottom of that graph, uh, they get to D3 where their competence, because they've stuck to it, their competence is increasing moderate to high competence. And it says they have variable commitment because they've had good enough motivation to carry them from D2 out to D3. Right? So the motivation is not bad. Very often, what we find is people's confidence isn't there yet. Okay, so in general, they're able to do it. They've got the, the, the skills to be able to do it, but the confidence is not there. Think about uh, maybe someone who's just learned to drive. Okay, so they're driving in the, you know, the Ubi Comfort Delgro in within the driving center. Okay, they can turn right, turn left, indicate, change gears. They can do all that. Once they go out onto the road, what happens? Actually, the skills required are the same. What's different is the confidence level because now, wow, there's so many cars around. So somebody who's at D3, that's what they're like. And then they move to, if they persist, they keep, keep at it, they get to D4, uh, where their commitment, their motivation is there and high competence. So what we love to see is most people at D4. But for ourselves, as self uh, uh, sales leaders, this developmental goal is goal or task specific. It's not referring to us as a person. It's referring to individual tasks that we have. Okay, so very important sort of mindset shift. We are not D2. We are D2 at uh, Because there are going to be some tasks that we are D4 at, some that we are D2 at, some that we are D1 at, some we are D3 at. If we are D4 at everything, very soon we get bored with our job because we're not learning anything new. So the best uh, sort of combination is quite a, quite a few D3, D4s, but then a few D1 and D2s as well because those are the things that challenge us, help us continually grow. Okay, so that's as a self-leader to diagnose ourselves. Are we D1, D2, D3, or D4? Okay. So for example, if you think about this, I won't get you to do this, this activity. If you think about where, what your development level is in creating a PowerPoint conversation, uh, presentation. Some people go, oh, it sounds interesting. I, you know, I like this PowerPoint presentation that Kevin's done. Actually, I didn't do this. Kevin did. I just want to do, do that, but I don't know. Really. So that's D1. Uh, high commitment. Yeah, I'm very excited, but I don't know how to do it. PowerPoint presentation and wow, so difficult. And there's so many animations and all that. And, 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 yeah. Maybe just get somebody to do for me, like, to, right? And then you slowly move on. Um, running a marathon, you know, some people D4, yeah, I can do it, no problem. D2, no, not interested, don't want to do. Um, quit. Generating leads on Twitter. Okay, what? So if you think, if you thought through those three tasks, you probably have noticed that you were at a different D level, depending on what task you're talking about. And so as you evaluate yourself in your job role, in your relationship with your, your team leader, don't think of yourself as a D1, D2, D3, D4. It's not you. It is yourself in combination with the task that you're currently talking about. In this task, I'm a D2. Boss, can you please help me? Can you please show me? Uh, and man, I need a bit of encouragement actually, right? Because you are low in commitment, low in confidence. If you're D4, say, uh, at a task, hey boss, uh, I'm a D4 at this. I, you know, I, I know how to do it. This is what I've done before. I'll just give you updates every week or so. If you are able to diagnose your own leadership needs that way and articulate it to your manager, man, 
that will revolutionize the sort of relationship you have, uh, that self-awareness. Okay, so another uh, reminder, people are not at developmental level. Goals and tasks are. So based on your honest consideration, you know, where are you on tasks that you're doing? Think about your job, break it up first into multiple tasks or goals. See if you can articulate the SMART of those goals, right? And what is your goal on that goal, All right? So this takes a little bit of stepping back and reflection about what you're doing. Because then you are able to think clearly about what you need, which is what we're going to move into. Okay, so we're not going to do this reflection. Uh, and the longer workshop, we get people to so do a bit of self-reflection and, and do this exercise. Uh, but if you want to take a screenshot, go ahead and do that. Um, so anywhere during this presentation, go ahead and take screenshots. Okay? There's no, no issues there. So goal setting, mindset, we covered challenges and constraints. Goal setting, we talked about goal. Skill set, we talked about goal setting, talk about diagnosing. Once we diagnose ourselves, what about matching? How do we get our leaders to match their leadership style to our needs? It's a bit like going to a doctor and, hey, doctor, I have this, 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 this symptoms, right? If you clearly articulate your, your symptoms, then the doctor can diagnose and give you what you need. If you find it hard, if you can't describe the symptoms well, then it's much harder for the doctor. So similar with your leaders, if you're deep, then the sort of leadership we need, if we are D1, the sort of leadership we need is that S1 style leadership, which is high directive and low supportive. Okay, notice D1, low competence. So low competence, we need high directive leadership. The leader needs to show us how, tell us how to do it. If the leader doesn't know how to do it, then refer us to somebody who can teach us how to do this. So directive style lead, just because somebody's being directive doesn't mean they're being like, you know, a, an army sergeant giving orders and barking orders at you and all that. No, 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 directive is just being clear about what and how to do, when to do something. Low supportive behavior. So because if we don't need such, so much uh, encouragement, so much uh, sort of, you know, hey, you can do this, uh, that kind of stuff. Somebody at D2, now there's still low competence and low commitment. So we need high directive and high supportive behavior. Now you're starting to see a, a trend, I, I think. Somebody at D3, high competence. So they don't need much, too much directive behavior. They only need low directive behavior. If their commitment is a problem, they need high supportive behavior, uh, leadership style. Somebody a D4, high competent women. So what do they need? Low supportive and low directive leadership. Okay, so a bit like in Singapore, we always say low crime does not mean, right? So if somebody is D4, they need low supportive and low directive behavior means they don't need that much leadership input. But low does not mean, mean we just ignore them. They can, because if we do that, they regress back to as uh, D3, D2. Right, so that's something that we go into, go into more in the full-on workshop, regression and what happens there. One other comment about this is very often, uh, actually the two biggest complaints we get with leadership is micromanagement and or uh, a leader that abandons people, give you something to do and then run away. They're not around to support you. So actually, Micromanagement is not bad in itself, okay? Micromanagement is using S1 and S2 leadership style on somebody who is D3 or D4 because they're already high competence. They don't need so much direction. If you already know what you're doing, your boss is going, can you just do that for step one, step two, step three? You go, stop micromanaging me, okay? A leader who is seen as abandoning their people is applying S3 or S4. They're not being directive. Everything leave to, leave to the team member to do. They're using that sort of leadership behavior on somebody who is D1 or D2 in their development, in their task. So the 
the biggest problems, 80% of leadership issues that we see in the marketplace in companies around the world is around a mismatching of leadership styles to developmental levels. You probably have experienced some of this. So if as a team member, we are able to articulate, and this gives us the language, this gives us the framework to understand. If we are able to articulate our development level, specific tasks, and then what input we need from our leader. It makes, it, it makes us so much easier to manage, it makes us so much easier to lead. And leaders love uh, team members like that. Okay. So direction to support, what does it look like? See, it's on the, the adult is directing, is showing how to use the drill. Okay, on the other one, on the support one, the boy is using the drill. The leader, the, the adult is there uh, encouraging him, although he should probably keep his eyes on the drill rather than on the adult. Um, so these are some behaviors, some, you know, 14, a selection of, of leadership behaviors that, uh, you know, in general, if a leader is able to do all these things, they're doing pretty well. Which of that direction and which of these behaviors are support, right? Because which leader has extra time? Oh, I've got so much time, it's okay. I can spend more time leading you than you need, right? So because most leaders are stretched for time, uh, we're going to provide people what they need and then move on and spend the other time with other people who need more. Okay, so... These ticks give you an idea of which of these behaviors fall under the direction category, which of these behaviors fall under the support category. Okay, so go ahead and take the screenshot of that because what you're doing is when you self-diagnose your needs, if say you, you find that you need a bit more direction, then telling your leader, boss, I need more direction, they may not understand that. If you can break it down to the behaviors here, showing and telling how, hey boss, the first time I've done this, uh, can you show me how? Or uh, can I clarify, so number two, right? Can I clarify who's doing what in, in, this, in this project? Uh, what are the timelines? What are the rationale? Clarifying your goals. All these are, are sort of, you know, the, oh, sorry, rationale was a support thing. Um, what are the priorities? Which one should I do first? If this and this thing happens, which one should I choose? Right. So these are more directive questions that your, le your leader will find it easy to answer your questions. Um, under support. So these are, if you find that, okay, either you're you are struggling with motivation or you're struggling with, with confidence, then these are the questions. These are the leadership input you can request from your leaders. Okay, so what is your leader providing and what leadership activity input do you actually need? Um, so here is broken up those same 14 activities. Obviously, there are more leadership activities that you can come up with. So th this is a good sort of overview. Um, great screen screenshot of that if you want, and you can use this. Okay, In a specific task, you go, what leadership uh, behavior am I receiving? Am I getting? Actually, what do I need? Um, and if there's a mismatch, then that's a conversation you can have your, with your leader. Uh, and I'm, you know, as somebody who leads teams who, you know, got people working uh, with me, I'm very happy if somebody can, can have this conversation with me. Okay, so finally, let's touch on being proactive, which is the last uh, mindset we're going to go through. Um, and pro being proactive is seeking what you need. Basically, proactively seeking what you need, what you need is in everybody's best interest, especially yours. Because what is the alternative uh, to proactively seeking what you need? Complaining? <laughs> Singaporeans, right? Champion at complaining. Uh, talking uh, you know, behind the, the boss's back. Uh, withdrawing. Oh, yeah. You're my leader, you should know what. It's a bit like, you know, sometimes we say that. You know, sometimes my, our, our spouse might say, oh, yeah, you're my husband, you love me, you should know what. No, the leaders don't know. Um, and they're really busy. So sometimes it's, it's just not, you know, they haven't taken the time to think through what's happening. They are functioning uh, naturally out of their, their natural styles. 
and they're not intentionally thinking about, okay, what does this person need? What does this person need? What does this person need? So if you can do that for them, identify, articulate what you need, it helps, it makes their job so much easier, which makes your job so much better. It's in, in your interest to do this. Okay, so here's a, a, a worksheet I'm going to give you. I'm going to drop in a chat shortly on one worksheet. So most of us will have one-on-one -on -one leaders, uh, meetings with our leaders, our managers. Um, but the Blanchard one-on-one is slightly different from normal one-on-one -on -one meetings. Okay, so in your one-on-one -on -one meetings, who calls a meeting? You or your manager? So in a Blanchard one-on-one -on -one conversation, you, the team member, individual contributor, you decide it is your meeting. You decide what to talk about and the leadership style response that you need. Okay, so you've got to think about that uh, first before your meeting. Keep it short, 15 to 30 minutes. Short and frequent is better than long and infrequent. Okay, so maybe you have a uh, catch up once every two or twice a week, 15 minute catch up. In, in a face-to-face -face environment, walk into your, your boss's office or cubicle or whatever, say, hey, you know, boss, can we have a quick chat about this? Um, or 15, 30 minute Zoom call. And you initiate the meeting. Okay, so the way you do that is using this worksheet. Okay, so if you do prepare this worksheet at least a day in advance, okay, the topics you're going to talk about, that's from goal setting. Okay, what are the tasks that you're doing? Just note them down. Uh, specific, you know, trackable, just put in you know, the relevance, the attainability, uh, all these things. So put that down in, in the under topics, your goals. Second section there, once you've diagnosed your development level on that goal, put it down. Okay, so if you find that you are thinking about a goal and one part of the goal you are D2, another part of the goal you are D4, then what I'd say is split that goal up into two goals. Okay, so for each goal that is written down, it should have one developmental level. Based on the goal and the development level, you can decide then what leadership, or you can suggest to your leader what leadership style you need. S1, S2, S3, S4. It's mostly direction. I need some solutions. I need information, uh, clarification, that kind of stuff. S2 is around code advice, feedback. Uh, once you go S3, S4, really you're asking them to listen uh, as, and sort of be a sounding board for you. Okay, so... For me, personally, when my wife comes to me with problems, very often she's asking for S3, S4. But I jump into S1, S2, right? She comes with a problem and immediately I give her a whole list of solutions. And she goes, oh, no, shut up, shut up. I'm just, I just want you to listen. And I'm all okay, okay, okay. Yes, dear, what do you want? They, and <laughs> that improves our relationship. So that is applicable to your boss your manager, uh, your colleague as well. And really anybody who is providing you the input you need, somebody who's giving you direction, how to do a certain task, can be thought of as your leader. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be the person with the name tag, who's, you know, you are the org chart, you are, that's a person above you. Not necessarily. Any, anybody who's providing you either the, the direction or the support you need, you can think of them as your leader. So that's self-leadership in a nutshell. And this is really, really tight nutshell. Huh? One hour. <laughs> Mindset, the one I, you know, we've left out is activating points of power. So, you know, that you'll have to do the full workshop for that. Uh, but really just hit an overview of challenging your assumed constraints, this skill set on, on goal setting and diagnosing your needs, on matching, uh, articulating it and getting your leader to match their style to what you need. And then uh, really, oh, I forgot to give you the, the form uh, that you can use, that one-on-one -on -one worksheet. Yeah, I'm going to stick it in the chat now. Okay, so it's it's called there's something SLX one-on-one -on -one worksheet. So you grab that, you can use that with your teams, you can use that with your manager. Go ahead, no intellectual property issues there. Okay, so uh, that's something you can take away. And these are things that you can use right away. So, so just you, want to finish off. Kevin, oh. Kevin, you didn't actually post the link in the chat. 
You didn't actually post it. Uh, I've put the I've put the document there. Can you not see? No, you cannot. Okay, okay. So I tell you what, I'll give you my email address. <laughs> Thank you. I think we probably have everybody's email address anyway, so we'll send it out over email. Um, everybody who's registered on this call, here's a freebie for you. Um, and we'll send it out if you can't find it on the chat. It's weird because I see it there. Um, okay, so just a, a couple of things that we have that's coming up. We have this self-leadership, which is the full program, uh, three two-hour sessions coming up on the 24th of May. So if you'd like to attend, you know, you see, you like what you've heard today and you go, okay, how do I actually do this stuff? And you want the opportunity to practice with people, to ask some questions, clarify what, what we're talking about, uh, contact us. You can uh, jump on that QR code or there's a link there, leadershiptraining.com.sg. Then from there, actually, you can just uh, navigate to uh, our programs. So there's a public program. If you would like something like this done in your organization, drop us an email as well. Contact at kenblanchard.com.sg or send me an email directly, kevin.chan at momenta.biz. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Uh, Derek.ma <laughs> at momenta.biz. Um, so I'm going to be traveling over the next couple of weeks. I'll be in uh, two, two countries in Africa. So... Uh, Email me, the, the, the response might be a bit slower. If you email Derek, he'll respond much quicker. Um, so those are our email addresses. The other thing we have there is SL2, which is, remember initially I showed you the, the, the diagram where self-leadership uh, and then one-on-one -on -one leadership or you know, when you're leading people, that's SL2 workshop, which is a two-day workshop. Um, and that's uh, coming up in May too. We do run these public workshops quite often. So if you can't make the May one, drop us an email and we'll, we'll, we'll inform you of the next one. Uh, generally about once a month or once in two months we run them. So if you'd like any other information, the email us, contact kenblanchard.com.sg or our emails are in the chat. Um, look at this, the time is 4.58. I have talked fast. Hopefully, I've kept it reasonably understandable. Um, any questions? Any questions? Either pop in the chat. You can send a message to Derek if you want to stay anonymous. Uh, and Derek, you know, just put the copy and paste your question or yell out your question. Uh, let's let's have a few minutes of Q and A before we go off and enjoy our long, long. And okay, um, if there's no questions, you've got our contact if you want to ask anything else. Um, but just want to leave you with this, that, you know, in a world crying out for effective leadership, we look at the situations around the world today, uh, Russia. <laughs> and Ukraine, uh, even you know, big countries like America and you know, leader of the free world. And there's so many issues, problems. In our region, we've got Myanmar. Uh, you know, if you've kept in touch with the situation in Malaysia, so many issues that actually find their root in leadership. Um, and actually, so this is why we are in this business. This is why we are doing this. Because if we can impact leadership culture, start anywhere, start at the family, start at social, religious groups, churches, uh, you know, community groups, companies. If we can start impacting uh, leadership culture where leaders see that their role in leadership is to so help their people be successful. It changes the way we do leadership. So that's our, that's what drives us. That's what uh, draws us maybe better than drives us. 
Uh, and what better place to start than how do we lead I'm back for the 30th uh, M oh, core. Wow. I'm back over. Recording progress. Why are you recording us hanging out, oh, Denise? No. This is private. We want to we want to talk about our coworkers now. Yeah, yeah we're talking. Okay.